Where just like that, when someone comes up and says something like, I am a God, everybody says, who does he think he is? I just told you who I thought I was, a God. I just told you, that's who I think I am. Would it have been better if I had a song that said, I am a nigga? Or if I had a song that said, I'm a gangster? Or if I had a song that said, I'm a pimp? All those colors and patinas fit better. Kanye West is not only one of the most recognizable music producers of this generation, but he's one of the best producers of all time, becoming extremely successful, doubling as a producer slash artist, releasing great music since 2003, producing from countless other acts, with over 160 million records sold, 24 Grammy Awards, tying only Jay-Z when it comes to hip-hop, and countless other awards from BET Awards, Billboard Awards, MTV Awards, you name it. This makes Kanye West one of the most influential musicians of all time. Hi, 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 hi. Kanye West was born June 8, 1977 in Atlanta. After his parents divorced when he was only three years old, he moved with his mother to Chicago, Illinois. Kanye's dad, Ray West, is a former Black Panther and was one of the first black photojournalists at the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Ray later became a Christian counselor. Kanye's mom, Donda West, was a professor of English at Clark Atlanta University and the chair of the English Department of Chicago State University before retiring to serve as his manager. At the age of 10, Kanye moved with his mother to Nanjing, China, where she was teaching at Nanjing University as a Fulbright Scholar. Kanye was not only the lone foreigner in his class, he was the only melanated child in his class, probably one of the few in the whole school. But Kanye settled in and quickly picked up the language, although he has since forgotten most of it. In around the seventh grade, Kanye began making musical compositions and then selling them to other children in the class. Kanye began writing music and poetry at a young age. Kanye met producer No ID who became Kanye's friend and mentor. After graduating from high school, Kanye received a scholarship to attend Chicago's American Academy of Arts in 1997, and he began taking painting classes. Shortly after, he transferred to Chicago State University to study English. At age 20, he dropped out to pursue his music career. As you can imagine, this greatly displeased his mother who was also a professor at Chicago State University at the time, but eventually she accepted it and rolled with her son. Kanye's beginning in production started in the mid-90s. He created beats for up-and-coming local artists around the way, but his first official production credits came when he placed eight beats on Chicago rapper Graf's 1996 debut album, Down to Earth. He also rapped on one of the songs, Line for Line. This is nothing unusual for up-and-coming entertainers. Dishing out their skills for free 
getting their buzz up and eventually hitting it big. The rapper Grav never really became a big rapper outside of Chicago, but it was enough for Kanye to get the experience. Kanye West was definitely putting in the work, grinding. On his song, Spaceship, Kanye writes, y'all don't know my struggle. Y'all can't match my hustle. You can't catch my hustle. You can't fathom my love, dude. Lock yourself in a room doing five beats a day for three summers. That's a different world like Cree Summers. I deserve to do these numbers. Kanye has always, always worked hard and it paid off. Jermaine Dupri in 1998 was working on his album Life in 1472 and that's where he got his first beat on a major label. The song Turn It Out featuring Nas was Kanye West's not so big break but at least he got paid 5000 Interestingly enough, Jay Z was also on this album Money Ain't A Thing but the two haven't crossed paths as of yet. Then. Two acts associated with Bad Boy, Harlem World, and the Mad Rapper scored some beats from Kanye as well. In 1999, Harlem World being Mace's group and Mace being under Puff Daddy at the time would have been great for Kanye. However, in the future, we all know it would have not been great for Kanye since Diddy is known for having a sweatshop of producers where he has five or six guys doing all the work and then he puts his name on it. If you're interested in Diddy, I got a video for that. But back to Kanye. Life changed when Kanye did Beanie Siegel's The Truth in 2000 on Rockefeller Records. This was the beginning of the perfect marriage for Kanye West. You see, Bad Boy would have been a good look, but Rockefeller at the time was heating up and Bad Boy didn't have Jay-Z. Kanye then produced the track, This Can't Be Life for Jay-Z, and then producing more songs for Beanie Siegel, There's Nothing Like It and Gangsta Gangsta. Kanye was quickly becoming Rockefeller Records go-to producer. The year 2001 was a rough year for America as a whole, especially in September. The Blueprint, which was released September 11, 2001, the Jay-Z classic album. But this was also a big year for the producer. Kanye produced five songs on the Blueprint. Take Over, Heart of the City, Never Change, Girls, Girls, Girls Remix, and the song that exploded Kanye West to stardom, Izzo. H to the Izzo, V to the Izzo, Around this time, Kanye started promoting himself hardcore. It's not only a producer, but letting people know he could rap and making it known that he wanted to rap. Kanye then became one of the hardest working producers we've ever seen, but most of us never even heard of. Kanye West produced so many songs for so many artists, some of these songs you know and love that you didn't even know Kanye West produced. Songs like Trina, Be Alright featuring Ludacris off of Diamond Princess, Talib Kweli's Get By off of Quality, Britney Spears, Me Against the Remix, featuring Madonna off the album titled Me Against the Remix. Monica, Knock Knock, After the Storm. Jay-Z and Beyonce's, Bonnie and Clyde. Ludacris's Stand Up, off of Chicken and Bear. Alicia Keys, You Don't Know My Name, off of The Diary of Alicia Keys. And Shine, More or Less, featuring Foxy Brown. And one of my favorites, Mariah Carey's Say the Night, off of Emancipation of Mimi. I previously thought the Emancipation of Mimi had Jermaine Dupri's hand in every song, but nope, Kanye West did it again. 
Around this time, Kanye was getting traction as not only the go-to producer for those soul beats, but as a rapper. And also around this time, other producers started making soul beats as well. Even though it's not clear who started it, Kanye West was clearly the best at doing it. But other great producers at the time, like The Alchemist, Just Blaze, Heat Makers, they were all doing the same exact thing. So there's no way to know who started it, but we know Kanye perfected it. Kanye West, shopping his demos and shopping himself, struggled to attain a record deal. Multiple record companies, including Capitol Records, denied or straight out just ignored Kanye because he did not portray the gangster image prominent in hip hop at the time. Dame Dash at the time knew that Kanye West longed to be a rapper and to be taken seriously. In fear of possibly losing Kanye West to another record label as a producer, Dame Dash reluctantly signed Kanye to Rockefeller as a recording artist. I didn't see that one coming, pause. I thought he could make good beats, just like a Just Blaze or, you know, the really bigs that brought that to my attention. Like, yo, I think we should pay attention to Kanye. And what was happening was, the Young Guns had a single out. It was going crazy on the radio. And I was trying to put Kanye's out. He was like, yo, let's focus on this dude. And um, I went to Lior and was like, yo, I'm going to put out Kanye. And he was like, no, we're going to focus on such and such. And I was like, All right, I'll take him someplace. So as Jeff Jam. And I was like, fuck it. I just put it out through here. And he started to catch fire and they had no choice. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know... I, I didn't know Kanye was going to do what he did today. And I, I thought that we were going to be able to leverage him. Like, to me, Kanye was a guy that could knock at the door, and they were going to let him in, and then all of us were going to run in. Mm. You know, even looking at how he is now, you know, he's on 100. He, like, he really deserves everything that he has because he does work that hard. His whole He's dedicated his whole life to it. Kanye's longtime dream of being a rapper finally was accomplished, but not without pain, as 2002 tragedy struck Kanye. On October 23rd in 2002 in Los Angeles, Kanye was involved in a serious car accident. It happened at approximately 3 a.m. Kanye allegedly fell asleep at the wheel and crashed into an oncoming car. Kanye's jaw was completely shattered in three places and the other driver broke both his legs. Kanye had to undergo emergency surgery where a metal plate was put into his chin and his mouth was wired shut for over a month. Despite still being injured, Face still swollen, mouth still wired shut. Two weeks later, Kanye recorded through the wire. Yo, Chief, they can't stop me from rapping, can they? Can they? The song Through the Wire was my introduction to Kanye West. Watching that video and seeing him with all of those celebrities, Jay Z, Pharrell, seeing him with all of those different rappers, let me know. That this guy has been in the music industry for quite a while. I just never heard of him before. Unless you're into music like that, you don't really check out the credits. You just listen to the music. Back in those days, the only producers I knew about was Pharrell, Timberland, Just Blaze, and that's about it. Kanye was well decorated by this time, having produced a song or a couple of songs on over 50 albums well before the college dropout. 
but when a college dropout was released February 10th, 2004, he had arrived instantly. The college dropout produced five singles, including Slow Jams, which has two versions of the song. One version is on Kamikaze, Twister's album. Slow Jams was everybody's favorite song. It was a number one song and even got a Grammy nomination and a BET nomination. Jamie Foxx was trying to cross over into music. By chance at a party he had thrown, he met Kanye and the rest is history. There are numerous artists that are thankful for Kanye West. Jamie Foxx, Slum Village, Consequence, John Legend, Rhyme Fest, Estelle, Fonsworth Bentley, Kid Cudi, Dilated People, and Kanye's responsible for revitalizing numerous other artists like Common, Tale Kweli, Twister, GOC, Selena Johnson, and some say even Jay-Z. Kanye released the song, Jesus Walks, a song that I would religiously skip whenever I got to it on the album. But one day, I actually listened to it. You see, back in those days, there were CDs. So sometimes, I would just let the CD just play out. And I listened to Jesus Walks. It was a good song. It was catchy. But nevertheless, not my favorite song on the album. Spaceship holds that title. We Don't Care holds that title. But Jesus Walks received a Grammy for Best Rap Song. It was nominated for Song of the Year. Rolling Stone named Jesus Walks the number 19 best song of the 2000s. The song had three different music videos. If Kanye didn't arrive with Through the Wire, he had finally arrived now. Next, Late Registration came out. And Kanye had to prove he wasn't a one album wonder. Late Registration came August 30th, 2005 with five singles. I remember the first time I heard Diamonds from Sierra Leone. I was in a car riding with some homies and that song came on and I was like, what is this? And everybody in the car was going crazy. When that song came out, I was like, "I, right, this Kanye West guy, he's here to stay. Just off that first single. And of course, just like the college dropout, this single, along with late registration, opened up my eyes more to the world. And then I watched The Blood Diamond. I watched certain movies. I started wanting to get into documentaries. Then Kanye West called on his old friend, Jamie Foxx again, for another banger, Gold Digger. This song is one of Kanye West's top songs in his discography. Eight times platinum in the US alone. He only has two other songs that are higher than that. Kanye then showed us he was more than just a rapper and producer when Hurricane Katrina hit. And to go down and shoot us. I remember being in TSA training to work at the airport and people were mumbling about Katrina, but I didn't have no idea what happened until I saw the paper and Kanye West said those faithful words. Big loss of all. George Bush doesn't care about black people. Please call. In the past few days. It just made us all love Kanye more. It made us all rock with him more. Because truth be told, that's how we all felt. 9-11-2007 is when graduation came out. By this time, Kanye was a household name and he was a legitimate rap superstar. I remember when he went head to head with 50 Cent. 50 was releasing Curtis on the same date. They went on 1 to 6 in Park and had a little battle. It was entertaining, but if I'm not mistaken, Kanye won. Now, on 1 to 6 in Park, they debuted The Good Life. I'm not sure what song 50 Cent debuted, but it didn't even matter. The Good Life just had us this thinking differently about Kanye West. Graduation had again five singles and Graduation is where we get the song Stronger. One of Kanye's best songs ever. I say one of because 
The song went 10 times platinum, but it's also tied with another Kanye song that went 10 times platinum. Graduation, because it was his last of the whole college slash school album. You know, the college dropout, late registration, graduation. That trilogy with this album made this trilogy one of the best, if not the best trilogies in hip hop ever. And when I say hip hop trilogies, I'm talking about 50 Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying, To The Masca, To Curtis, trilogy, excellent. Jay-Z, I think got two of them, but Jay-Z's first trilogy, volume one, volume two, volume three, classic. What about Nas? These songs really weren't a part of a, you know, trilogy, but they were three consecutive albums. Illmatic, It Was Red, and I Am. And I'm not gonna lie, I think Kanye's trilogy of those three albums in a row might be better. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Let me know if Can't Tell Me Nothing was your ringtone or your phone in 2007, because it sure was mine. At this point in his career, Kanye West was untouchable and damn near unstoppable. But then again, more tragedy strikes when his mom, Donda West, suddenly dies, November 10th, 2007. A little over a year after his mom's passing, he gave us 808s and heartbreaks, November 24th, 2008 that spawned four singles love lockdown was shared with fans before it was released fans gave it negative reviews partly because it was a new sound for kanye so kanye re-recorded love lockdown and released it and didn't care what they said the song love lockdown had mixed reviews but i know on hot 97 in new york fuck master flex played it over and over and over again and to me it was different it wasn't what I was accustomed. I wanted Kanye to continue spitting knowledge, spitting facts, helping our people. I wasn't into the whole love lockdown thing, the whole auto-tune thing. But the fans spoke, especially when Heartless came out, platinum 10 times, tying it with the song I mentioned before, Stronger. 808s and Heartbreaks was a smash. Not really my style of music. I liked Paranoid. I liked Heartless but it just wasn't my style. I was quickly missing the old Kanye. Now Kanye has always made it very clear that he had an interest in fashion and he desired to work in the clothing design industry. He launched his own clothing line in spring of 2006 and developed it over the following four years. Ultimately, the line was canceled in 2009. For those who don't know, that's how we get the famous quote, how sway? It yourself. How, fact, Sway? You take a few steps back to go. You ain't got the answers, man. You ain't got the answers. You ain't got the answers. You ain't got the answers, Sway. Kanye. I've been doing this more than you. Doing what? You ain't more got. Me? Come on, chill out. You bro. ain't got the Kanye, answers. Relax. You ain't got the answers. Bro, I'm asking you. You a ain't question. been doing the education. Kanye was talking to Sway about a clothing line. I read Dapper Dan's book, and he explained it perfectly. It's incredibly hard to start your own clothing line. Even for someone as well known and as rich as Kanye West. In January 2007, Kanye's first sneaker collab was released. A special edition Bapester from a bathing ape. In 2009, Kanye released a shoe line designed for Louis Vuitton. And also in 2009, Kanye collaborated with Nike to release his own shoe, the Air Yeezys. He became the first non-athlete to be given a shoe deal with Nike. Kanye, however, worked hard on his craft, and in the fall of 2009, it's reported that Kanye moved to Rome, where he interned at Italian fashion brand Fendi. 
giving ideas for the men's collection, and even claiming that he gave Fendi the idea for leather joggers. Kanye's relationship soon came to an end with Nike over, you guessed it, money. But on December 3rd, 2013, Adidas officially confirmed a new shoe collab deal with West. The deal was reportedly 10 million plus royalties. And Kanye had more opportunity to create than before. Kanye was working on new music. And if you're like me, you was hoping for the old Kanye to come back. You was hoping for some kind of college related material but what came out of that was my beautiful dark twisted fantasy and that's what people were really starting to say kanye was an illuminati kanye also turned adidas sneakers into a damn full-fledged clothing line which was kanye's plan all the long kanye west was at the top of his game taking over everywhere he went he was quickly becoming one of the most recognized people in the world but at the same time there was a change in Kanye. He was slowly changing. My beautiful dark twisted fantasy dropped on 11-22-2010 with four singles. Power dropping in July and Monster. My beautiful dark twisted fantasy is not what I wanted from Kanye, but it's a good album. Next, we get Watch the Throne when Kanye teams up with his mentor, the great Jay-Z. August 8th, 2011. Seven singles. Kanye by this time is absolutely failing himself. Having so much success. Kanye has soon started dating Kim Kardashian and was getting pretty serious with her. To around 2012, Cruel Summer came out, the compilation album featuring Pusha T, Big Sean, Tiana Taylor, Sai High the Prince, Kid Cudi, this was a number one album, again, for Kanye West, spawning four singles. The cult favorite, Mercy. Well, I'm not going to say the cult favorite, but Mercy was a great song. And Click, the radio-friendly song that I absolutely hated. It was then reported that Kim Kardashian was pregnant, and the couple were both expecting their first child. They later got married on the Kardashian show and Kanye officially became Kanye Kardashian. The funny thing on Gold Digger, Kanye had rapped about getting left for a white girl and look at him. He then welcomed the birth of his beautiful child, Northwest. Now this next era of Kanye, the Yeezus era, I don't really feel no way about this era. I just know that it's not the college dropout era. Some would think that Kanye was quitting music, diving deep into fashion with this new Adidas deal. Nope, he was working on an album called Waves. At least that was the name of it originally. He eventually settled for the life of Pablo, being released Valentine's Day 2016. When asked who's Pablo, Kanye would respond, Pablo Escobar, Pablo Neruda, Pablo Picasso, The Apostle Paul. This album had three singles. With this album, I was just gonna accept Kanye for being the Kanye that he is now. But for the first seven tracks of this album, I could just listen to it. Nevertheless, Kanye never fails. It was a great album. Well, if you count Yeezus. <laughs> Who throw some other shit? Like when I saw the two singles that were released, Black Skinheads and Bound 2, I was like, Black Skinheads? I'm like, man, Kanye, this is 10 years, almost 10 years after his first album. I'm like, Kanye's looking like a clown now. I don't even think I even listened to the whole Black Skinhead song before. Bound 2 was the regular old Kanye, cool song, had Kim all in the video. In 2018, we have Ye, June 1st, 2018 that is. Two singles, seven tracks. Kanye was working on officially changing his name to Ye. Then we have Kid See Ghost, a compilation album again, but this was nowhere near Cruel Summer. Kid See Ghost was seven tracks with no singles. It featured High Dollar Sign, Pusha T, 
Yasin Bey, aka Most Deaf. And I'm not gonna lie, I tried listening to this album maybe once or twice, and that was it. Total snoozer, as far as I'm concerned. He followed that up with Jesus is King the next year in 2019 with two singles and 11 tracks. I like the whole Chick fil A and Follow God. That was cool, but. I wasn't really feeling the pretty much whole gospel thing because now Kanye has changed numerous times from the conscious rapper, to the sad rapper, to the party rapper, to the partying asshole rapper, to now the kind of do what I want, hypocritical, God fearing rapper. And that's where we get to Donda, August 29th, 2021. Now, the thing about Donda. It was a number one album, yet again, for Kanye West. But this one was different, this number one. This album, Donda, spawned four singles and 32 tracks. In my opinion, half of the album is good and the other half, I can just do without. I'm gonna be honest, it just sounds like a lot of musical instruments and mess. But that's Kanye for you. Kanye West told us that he was a god. As far as I'm concerned, he not only told us, he showed us. He spoke up for his people. He spoke up and continues to speak up for wrongs done to all people. Yeah, he's wearing a red hat. Yeah, he may have said some questionable things. I don't think he's anti-Semitic, by the way, but nevertheless, he said some questionable things. But I'll let you know right now, what do you think about rappers, musical icons, fashion, all wrapped up in one, the ultimate MC? You have no choice but to name Kanye West and call him the God MC. Or, as he will have it, he's just Kanye the God. To this date, Kanye has produced, written, or rapped on over 126 singles. To this date, Kanye has produced, written, or rapped on over 217 albums. Kanye may not be your favorite, but you gotta face it. As far as an icon goes, he's the closest thing we have to it. Kanye has a new album coming out. Vultures with Ty Dolla Sign. I don't know if this is a compilation album or this is a collaborative album. I do know I seen a little rave thing Kanye had going on with all of the different rappers on stage and with his daughter singing about how she's your bestie. I like the songs and I'm not gonna front. It got me into Kanye's music again. If it's gonna be a classic, we gotta see. Out of Kanye's 10 studio albums and out of Kanye's two collaborative albums, I believe Kanye has seven classic albums. Seven. What is Vultures going to be? That remains to be seen. I appreciate you all for sticking around to the end of this video. I'm glad you bared with me. I was a little under the weather recording this. But it's all good. KJ Media 100. I'll see you in the next video. I'm out.